Today, you're never gonna this is the pre-show to show you what we're going through. She seems to be, she seems to be wanting to broadcast from a car park, man. I can take this out of the Give podcast. This I'm is the so pre-show close. of WP Tonic, this is, this is episode happening. 72. Looking for Carrie Dill. Looking for that famous Genesis developer. Yeah, listen, out looking, there. hunting her down. Hunting and looking her down. Oh, we've okay. had sightings. She's going to do this in the car. <laughs> <laughs> we've had sightings. Okay, I'm going to pause. Okay. Uh, From Fort Worth in some parking garage. <laughs> For the reception, I've got to say, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's not bad, actually, Kerry. You're our first guest that's decided to do an interview in their car. <laughs> well, let me just say, I cut it a little close on the errands. My oh. apologies. No, so I'm, I'm here. It'll be up on YouTube in about two now, hours. Carrie, all that matters. Have you got any words of wisdom when it comes to the Genesis framework? Not a single one. Well, that's us finished because I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, we're about ready to start the show. Do you guys want to talk before the show or just want to shoot from the hip? Oh, I think we better go for it, Bill. Go for it. When I do this, I'm not just like playing around. It means there's about a minute left and then we're going to take a break. We can talk in the break, reorganize. and So, are you ready? Sure. Let me hear your sound. One, two, sound. I don't have to hear a sound. I didn't think about sound yet. One, two. Check, 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 check. Talk a little louder. Check, check. What mic are you check using? Line. You know what? Here, let me get my... Uh... Oh, God. It just, it sounds it weird. Those would probably be better. Is it, oh. Does this sound better? Hey, can no. we ask what kind of car it is? Uh, it's a Toyota <laughs> Highlander. Yeah. Okay, check. Touch right here. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's, that's the mic. Okay. Oh wait, that your life with your. <laughs> How's this? Okay, oh, that sounds that good. Better? That's good enough. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I can work the sound too in the backside. Okay, I'm gonna practice once. Okay, I'm gonna just practice everything. Like I got a new toy and I'm playing with. I'm gonna practice. It's just a practice. It's not even Christmas yet. Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 72. Today, we continue on with Genesis Live. Okay, that's not exactly what I'm saying. Today, we continue on with Genesis, and we are live. And with, with the queen of the Genesis we are framework. Live. I think we we say queen? I yeah, the queen of the Genesis framework. With the Carrie. queen. <laughs> Somewhere in Texas. <laughs> in an undisclosed location. In an undisclosed location. It's worse, yes. than, it's worse than Rebecca. She was in a bunker in a, in a bunker somewhere in... She, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, in Michigan. There's bunkers Michigan. in Michigan. Yeah. yeah, she was in a command center, so... Is that your puppy on the mug? It's a bulldog. I said puppy. Puppy, bulldog. I call all dogs puppies. Oh, right. Sorry. That's a beast. Damn. Sorry. That's a, yeah, it's a. My aunt had one called Bertie. Yeah, it was a bit of a monster. We had a good heart. You don't want one of them biting you, though. <laughs> That'd be a bit nasty. They suffer uh, from asthma? Or... Yeah, they do suffer um, from a lot of um, eye conditions and nose, nasal. Is um, they've been too bred, really, but they're and arthritis. They suffer from arthritis, but they're very sweet actually to their owners. <laughs> anybody, any, anybody he did particularly like, he would growl. <laughs> 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 uh, he liked uh... me, but there was a lot of people that he didn't. <laughs> yeah, uh, the only the only bulldogs I've known have had severe asthma. And you know they'll they'll walk up the stairs because they want to be with you, right? Their dogs are pack animals, but they're like <sighs> on the uh, stairs trying to. Oh, to I'm very you. I'm very impressed with that with that, Kerry. I, don't, I didn't know you could do animal wit. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your your breath of of knowledge and abilities just get wide. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not just a Genesis person. I'm the bulldog asthma impersonator. Uh, yeah, it does interviews in cars. All right, there we go. Are we ready, wizard? Yeah, almost. We got okay, here's, here's it goes. It's going to be what it's worth. 
Ready? Ready. Okay. Three breaks. Let me start the... Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. I time everything now. I even time when I edit. Okay. Now a couple of seconds of silence because we did. I gotta cut the first part of this out. Not on YouTube, but on the. Uh... Do you want to know? Welcome to WV Tonic, episode seventy-two. Today we continue on with the Genesis Framework discussion, live with the queen of Genesis, Carrie Dills, and then she's on a bomb shelter at Fort Leavenworth getting ready for the attack. Carrie, welcome. That's a heck of a bomb shelter. Looks like a car to me. You know what? The Wi-Fi is incredible in this shelter. <laughs> oh, just one technical thing, um, Bill. Um, unleash the other seat because I think Kim wants to join us. Oh, we're going to have another guest. This is a yeah. first, a double first. Oh. We got Carrie on her phone in her car in a bomb shelter. Yes. And I've, I've, I've never heard of unleashing the, the seat. Yes. Unleash sounds, the no, I, that's a no Unleash, unleash the cretons. <laughs> unleash it because and Kim, Kim wants Kim to is join. Up. We've got Kim. 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 We balanced it. We've got the, gen we've got the genders balanced. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there. Here we are. See, we're saying that there's an article today in, from Silicon Valley about the gender bias. Yes, we're not, we're no we're gender trying. bias here. No we're gender trying. bias here. Kim, your bomb shelter looks much better lit than mine. <laughs> hey, Kim, do you like my new effects? I do. I like them a lot. Yes. All right, let's get going before this all collapses. Yeah, I'm here to listen. I, I, I'm here to learn from this lady because I need some Genesis help. Oh, well, she's the queen of Genesis. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so um, then maybe we can have a quick discussion about how was WordCamp US. How does that okay. sound? That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, we're going to have an interesting show. Um, so, um, Kerry, you know, we're, we're doing a month of um, Genesis framework, and we started off the month with some beginner stuff from me. Um, so... Um, what do you see as um, the strengths and maybe are there any weaknesses about using a framework or using Genesis in general? Uh, sure. So, so strengths and weaknesses, right? So strengths is there is a massive community of Genesis users, both developers, designers, users, uh, all of those things. So when it comes to uh, finding tutorials or, or how-tos, uh, probably more than any other WordPress framework, you're likely to find it for Genesis. Uh, weaknesses, I don't think the weaknesses are in the framework itself. I'm going to say the weaknesses are in uh, Genesis being that... Okay, so Genesis makes it easy, right? Like the, it, it makes it simpler to do templating and developing with WordPress. Uh, but I think the weakness is that people rely on Genesis without fully understanding how we're, the WordPress templating system and WordPress theming uh, works behind that. Yeah, I think that's actually, a, a, I think you need to have some, you know, studies to some degree, the template structure and the hierarchy of WordPress before you just jump in to Genesis. And also, you know, it's utilized the wizard. So, all right. I just jumped in. Yeah, just wizard. Just, keep, just wizard somewhere else. Uh, right. So, basically, um, but you've got to use the, um, you've got to know. You've not got 17 sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, they're all done by filters. You've got to learn your filters and hooks, haven't you? And it's got its own Genesis way of doing it. And, you know, there is, would you agree with this, Kerry? You know, there is, um, you've got to learn how to do it the Genesis way. So there's a amount of time where you've got to learn it. There, there is. So my, uh, not to uh, go over on about my own introduction to the Genesis experience, well, I but I didn't. We all, we all plug our own stuff there. <laughs> it's like a commercial second half. Yeah. But hello, my, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so my introduction to learning WordPress was through Genesis. So 
the Genesis way was Mm -hmm. just sort of the first thing I learned. Um, And then learning sort of the overarching WordPress way was secondary for me. Yeah, can I ask you something about that, actually? Um, Why did they, um, when they first, because, you know, you are the queen of Genesis, so I thought you might... I'm not really a queen. You can ask my husband. It's not true. (laughs) Well, we better be nice to you. Uh, um, So... um, John, uh, maybe you're the queen. Oh, thank you, Bill. Uh, um, he's really, he's been really good to me today. He has, yes. uh, um, so as the Queen of Genesis, um, do you know why they? Was there a p- performance gain in the way that they structured the initial framework? Because was it was it developed about how long ago was it? Four or five years ago? Uh, I, I'm not the best suited to answer that question of when it first came on, but I would say five years is probably fairly accurate and, and was there was there a performance gain in the way that they decided to structure the framework i could not tell you because i've never done like a before and after test from the I mean, from that i haven't even worked with the original code base because i haven't been in it for that for that mm-hmm. long um I, 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 I think a lot of like if you're using so now I'm talking about 2015 if you're using genesis uh, the performance benefit would come from it's very well structured code uh, and it's lean code like the the entire if you were to download the Genesis framework I think the entire framework is maybe like 41 kilobytes or I, it's it's little uh, so there's not a lot of bloat uh, and plus the way the uh, the code is structured is is very uh, lean semantic Google friendly um, so from a performance standpoint, I think Genesis is fantastic. What its original purpose was, I, I can't speak to. One of the um, slight criticisms of it is that it's still, in, you know, inside a, a framework, a, a parent theme. It, it includes some SEO elements, which some people say are defunct now and isn't a really good idea having that kind of functionality inbuilt into the act- a theme. What's, what's your response to that? Um, I I think that SEO. Uh, so to to be to be clear with maybe that that for listeners that aren't completely familiar with Genesis Framework, there are the SEO benefits that come from uh, nice semantic markup, and then Genesis also includes some SEO settings like way to add uh, you know keywords and, and meta to post. That really has no business in the framework. However, I think due to, and this is just an opinion, but I, I think due to uh, backwards compatibility, which uh, the Genesis folks have always been uh, very mindful of, uh, that, that's, that exists to accommodate people that may be using that. But I, yeah, it really didn't have a part of the framework. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask you, you know, obviously there's a number of starter themes, and there's a there and there's kind of um, kind of themes based on some external CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, Foundation. So, yeah. um, what do you see? And I in the article that I wrote, which you were kind enough to read uh, um, and give me a little bit of feedback, um, I think that causes a little some. A little bit of confusion, but what do you see as the main benefit and the main difference between Genesis and maybe a starter theme? So I, I, I think they can go hand in hand. Uh, so you could say Genesis is a framework, therefore you build child themes on top of that uh, versus something like Bootstrap or that you know that you're including in a theme or underscores where you're just taking a code base and starting with it. I the core question or the, I guess the the core concern for me is not even a concern. That's a heavily weighted word. The thing I think about is if you're doing repetitive tasks over and over and over, right? So every time you build up a theme, you're doing your base HTML styles, you're doing your resets, you're, you're doing some very basic things. Why not start with a starter theme that has those things built in? 
and that's where I think a framework comes in, like Genesis comes in really handy. Uh, and again, I don't want to go tooting my own things here, but I happen to have a starter theme or two that I've built for Genesis, one free, one not free, uh, that, that show how you can kind of do that. So yes, you can do it with a, with a framework and then a child theme on top of that, or you can start with uh, just a, a complete naked theme and then create your own starter theme out of that. But I think uh, ultimately the point is to create something that fits your workflow and speeds up your development uh, and has, because every, every developer has their own little bit of things that they like. So whatever makes you most proficient in your development, there's not a right or wrong. Oh, thanks for that, Kerry. We're going to go into our first break and we'll be coming back soon. Hey, time for commercial. And remember, share the oils, share the oils in Northern Nevada, great folks. And remember, I'm developing a product right now that Kim is helping me with. And it's all about uh, using Blab and getting your word out and communicating through creating that into both YouTube as well as iTunes or iTunes being a podcast. So it's more than just, you know, it's net casting, I call it. It's more than just that iTunes group. So that's what we're working on. And I'm going to head over to Jonathan. He's going to do a little commercial for his business, WP Tonic, and then he's going to start the show again. <clears throat> Oh, hi there, folks. If you're looking for WordPress medicine, i.e. maintenance and support, come over to WP Tonic and join the WP Tonic tribe and get your dose of olive oil every month. So that's mine. So we're going to go back to the queen of WordPress. Back to the show. Back to the show, to the queen of WordPress um, and the queen of howdy, howdy. So <laughs> we're talking about him here, right? <laughs> no, we're talking How about... Are you, Carrie? <laughs> <laughs> so back to back to work uh back to genesis uh Kerry. um so um one of the other slight criticisms which i thought was, was a bit out um understandable but not that great really is that you you got a framework so you get bloated code um i think that's a little bit unfair because that's similar to any kind of framework you know if you utilize a framework um around JavaScript. Um, but on the other hand, um, I don't think JavaScript would have come back the way it had without frameworks. I, I think it was a bit of a dead language before jQuery and, and the other more modern frameworks. So what, what's your response to that slight criticism that you get bloated code? I think, uh, so going back to what I said before, if you actually download the, the framework, uh, it's less than, than 50 KB. It's, it's a very small file. Uh, there's not a whole lot of overhead. Um, as of, uh, so Genesis 2.0 sort of brought in a new era for Genesis. So there was the, um, all the HTML5 stuff that, that was introduced with uh, Genesis 2.0. So if you go through the code, uh, there's a lot of conditional stuff like, hey, are we uh, pre 2.0 or are we post 2.0 based on the individual user's install? And only the appropriate code that's needed is loaded. Uh, it's very lean code, very lean. I would be, I would, let me just say, I don't have a stake in this. I have no stock in Genesis. I do not work for Studio you Press. Mean, you mean, uh, you mean, you mean, you mean Brian Clark doesn't send you a really nice Christmas card with a big bungle of cash in it? No, I've never gotten my like golden Starbucks card from Gardner for Christmas. It just it oh. hasn't happened yet. Uh, so Dis yeah, I'm not being disgusting. I what do you, what do you <laughs> think, Brian? You know, God Almighty, Brian, you can't send a nice Starbucks to the Queen of. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, yeah. he's yeah. They're, they're those folks are fantastic. But anyways, I'm I'm saying this from a perspective of a developer that's not associated uh, with the company in any way. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, one thing I want to clear up with you in in the child in the Studio Press child themes are they all now responsive and are they all based on HTML5 and because I'm not too sure. I always think there's a little bit of confusion. Can you? help clarify that at all absolutely so if you if you actually go to studio press and uh search through their themes there's a couple of filters you can look through uh like like maybe business themes is one or 
or portfolio themes is another one not. But one of the choices is HTML5. And if you get HTML5, that means it came out post Genesis 2.0 and has HTML5 semantic markup. And by the like, let's even stop about talking about responsive as a feature. That is just your theme should be responsive. I haven't looked recently enough, but I, I think that Studio Press has retired most of their non-responsive themes. But if you want to be absolutely certain, that's actually one of the uh, the filters that you can choose when you're mm. searching through their themes. Well, that's clear. Now, you you said that as a as a you know utilizing the Genesis framework, and you were building on top like even a a total. You're not utilizing one of their ch commercial child themes or getting one from a third party. You were actually building a true custom design you actually mm -hmm. feel in that scenario it does quicken the process quite considerably would that be correct oh yeah absolutely so my, my advice is always kind of and, and kim you can pr probably comment on this but like if you can find uh i mean if you're developing themes out for clients and say they like the minimum pro theme and you're like okay we can do that, but they're like, oh, I, you know, the header's too big, or maybe I want my sidebar on the other side. Or they would, or, they would or, never or say, they would never say that. <laughs> they would never ever say that. But if you can find a uh, a theme, an existing Genesis Child theme that's like ninety percent of the way there, right? Kim, is am I preaching truth? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's the way to do it. And why would you even, I don't build, I don't build themes for people. I don't actually build sites for people anymore. But when I did anything you could do to spin it up fast, you know, I even, Jonathan, close your ears. I even uh, used to, when I spun up themes for people or sites for people, I had a standard site that I liked. It had the plugins I liked, the backups I liked, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I had it in a backup form and I would pop a migration up there because it saved me an hour of putting things together. I would never do that. I know. Um, um, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, close your ears. <laughs> uh, uh, um, you would never do anything that speeds up the process? Uh, I yeah, of course not. I'm slow. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> so, You're like that bulldog going up the stairs with the asthma. The time, like, yeah, you the know, time you clock. Do it the now. Hard way. Everything now. As long as it's going to take me to do something. All right. Uh, what's it, what, There's a reason what, for that. If you time stuff, that's how you make money by timing stuff. All right. That was his right. contribution. Kim. It makes it work. You uh, don't um, stop. Uh, so um, you can. That's very insightful, Bill. We didn't know that. Yeah, you needed. John, I'm going to get making. I'm going to get you rich. <laughs> you're going to kill me soon. <laughs> that's what I'm going to. No. Uh, um, <laughs> um, so, Kerry, I think um, I didn't make myself clear. I was talking about total custom theme making where the client insists that this is you know you're 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 you know it's in the contract this is going to be a pure you know and everybody's got their own kind of framework anyway but if you if you would what because i think what the confusion is it's just words really what is a custom design and what is semi and it's all mixed up and it's all jumbled up really isn't it but let's say that they got the impression and the feeling they're going to get a custom design utilizing the genesis framework as a professional theme developer you could do the process a lot quicker would you say yes yes and no and i will say this if you see a theme in the marketplace or say your client sees a theme in the marketplace and they're like and when I say marketplace, I mean a Genesis child theme and the studio press marketplace or perhaps a third party Genesis theme. Uh, and they just want to tweak 10%. Then you start with that child theme. If, if that does not meet their needs and they need to have 100% custom design, which I find is rare okay. in the for, most businesses do not need that because that goes from all of a sudden from a, uh, you know, a sub $5,000 project to a sub $20,000 project. If you need to bring in a design team and think about the UX and all of that. And then from there, you're coding out a custom theme. You're not starting with any, uh, you know, current child theme in the marketplace. You're starting with your own, uh, like from scratch, essentially. Um, 
the expense is really high for your customer. So unless a customer truly needs that, uh, that's not what you sell them on. Um, oh, and, and maybe, I don't, I don't know who just had a building fall within their <laughs> room. Uh, Watch out for those terrorists. Yeah. That's my cats. You know what it is? It's my cats. I'm sorry. Oh, the cat. Uh, we got, we got all going. Sure. Let me get my lab. We, the cats. We got all going. Know, we're all going um, scenario about cats, Carrie. They're you know, like... Kim, if I had a nickel for every time cats had ruined my podcast, I could it's probably striking. have at least enough to buy a, a Terra photo. Cats. A... Why well, actually have a... When I do my video training, I actually have a picture of one of my cats peeking around the monitor. And when yeah. they do this, I just, I, I do this little video thing where it fades her in and it fades her out. And I say, it's a pebble sighting. But I don't know what they're doing right well, now. That will really go to don't. a break, the second break. And Carrie Goat here is, and guess what? Be, be careful what you say. John Locke is in the house. Okay. <laughs> And we're back. It's time for Curious Commercial. I didn't even know that I was going to get a commercial spot. I, I think this might be like a Super Bowl commercial spot. I'm not sure. Didn't you I pay $2,000 extensive... for it? Uh, I yeah. thought it was 2500 Did Kim get a discount I don't know about? <laughs> uh, yeah, so Carrie Dills, blog regularly over at CarrieDills.com for both uh, WordPress tips and just uh, tips for running your own freelance business. Uh, I am a WordPress course teacher over at lynda.com. Ping me if you want a free trial for that, because I can hook you up. Uh, and then also I have a starter theme for the Genesis uh, framework called Utility Pro that I am extremely proud of. It's accessibility friendly, translation ready, uh, mobile first, all the good stuff. So back to you. Yeah, and I can say it's an excellent theme. So that's a quick um, question. Was, if, was it like working for Morton or with Morton at all? <laughs> <laughs> that made you laugh. Uh, that made you laugh. Well, well, I mean, I don't work for Morton or technically with Morton. Neither, neither one of those scenarios. He is so Morton is a staff author, uh, which means his full time job is to produce courses for Linda.com, now a LinkedIn company. Uh, myself as a contractor, I come in and do courses maybe like once a quarter or so. Uh, but I, I love Morton. Morton taught me WordPress via lynda.com. Uh, he is a large part of the reason that I'm even, uh, in, in my career where I am, uh, just because of the content that he's made available education wise. So, uh, the highest regard for him, he's, I, I, I got to uh, have a, a cocktail with him at, at WordCamp US this past week. And I think I've gotten over the point where I'm fangirlish and can just act normal around him. Uh, but no, he's he's fantastic. Yeah, he's a fantastic guy, actually. Um, so bright, it's nauseating. But there we go. We go. <laughs> so, it's so terrible. It is, right? The rest of it's just like idiots around him. I, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the sharpest tool, but I'm not the bluntest. But um, I don't know where he came from. You know, uh, I, um, I, I tried to slip some uh, stupid drugs into his cocktail so that I could look really smart talking uh, next to yeah. him. Uh, so um, I, I want to get back onto the old Genesis. I, I, one thing I like. So let's say you've got a agency client and they're giving you a, a Photoshop mock-up and they say build it in WordPress. Would you? Can you do something like that utilizing the Genesis framework? Yeah, absolutely. I think. So here's the deal: when you get the, the, the typical client got to split this off in two ways there are people that have been longtime fans of copy blogger and have read all their content marketing stuff so when they approach somebody they're like i want a genesis site give me give me a genesis site the rest of humanity which is like 99.9 percent .9 of humanity doesn't know what genesis is doesn't even necessarily care what wordpress is they want a, a specific solution and the technology to get you there they, they don't they don't care about uh, so in, then in terms of being the, the person to help get them to that end 
you can go with the technologies that, you know, will get them there, which is, you know, in our case, WordPress and, and sometimes Genesis, if that's appropriate. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, I think another question is, um, because of your experience, um, I wanted to move this. Let's say you're dealing with a, a advanced owner hobbyist that wants to really get to know Genesis really, really well on the code base, or you're dealing with an intermediate developer. What are some of the, you know, you obviously your resources on lynda.com and on the website are great, but maybe could you name some other resources <clears throat> and um, that could help that um, owner who really wants to get to know Genesis or that kind of in intermediate developer? Sure. So there's... <sighs> I am going to come off a little bit self-promoting here, but there's, no, no, there's two no. ways to go about this. And when I was learning about Genesis, I wanted about the first way, which is devour every tutorial you can possibly get your hands on. And they're not necessarily uh, related or, 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 or packaged in a nice condensable format. Uh, but that's what I did because there was not any sort of official Genesis education. Um, and this is where I, I really don't mean to sound tooting my hornish, but what I've, uh, what I've tried to do with, uh, my Linda courses is to take all of that and condense it into a couple of hours, uh, where, yeah, it does cost money. Um, but you're able to, instead of scouring the web for information, uh, just sort of get all of that in a, a consolidated place. So I think it's the DIYer and this isn't just Genesis. This is in, in general. The web is full of information. You can learn anything you want without paying a dime. It's whether or not you want to take the time to go scour the web and learn it or pay the cost of taking a course that's already sort of wrapped that up yeah. in a neat bow. I think also one of the strengths of Genesis, I, I totally agree with what you just said, but also there's a lot of misinformation, um, things, but the good strength of the Genesis community is that there seems to be a core group of developers that have written a great deal and contributed to that community. So there's a core of really knowledgeable developers that have also written a lot of material. Would you agree with that, Kerry? <coughs> yeah. I mean, the uh, I think about like Shridhar, uh, Bill Erickson, Eric, yeah. um, uh, Brad, I, I, there's a there's a lot of folks out there that have written considerably about Genesis, but it's because they're intimately familiar with the framework and and yeah. happen to be writing about it. I don't think there's yeah. any. Uh, it's not a. There's no corner on the market. Anybody is is welcome to no, share well, what they're was, learning. That was a, a great plus site plus um, for the actual framework. That there's a core developers that have really contributed a lot when it came to resources for, and that's a great resource. That's what I meant, really. You it's gotta, fantastic. You've got, you got to understand I'm talking English, English, Lee, so you might have... I know. It's not, I, it's not Texan. Texan English. And, it's yeah, not Texan, always... Carrie, I'm sorry. You know, it's not Texan. <laughs> but but <laughs> here's the deal. I'll, I'll put in this, this one little plug for anybody that's wondering how they can get involved in a, the Genesis community or the Word, uh, WordPress community. And that is share what you know, because whatever it is you know, you know more than somebody else. And when I started my blog, uh, I, I started really, it was like I worked on a project, I learned how to do something, and then I wrote a blog about it. So, what it's, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's taking what you know and then sharing that back to the community and because that's how I learned from other folks that have been so generous sharing their knowledge through blog posts, et cetera. Uh, that was sort of my way of one, both giving back and two kind of uh, cementing my own knowledge, because when you can teach something, uh, it's, it, knowing something is very much dif different than teaching something. Um, yeah, can, I, can I ask a question about that? Um, looking back, what, what level was your knowledge around HTML, CSS before you um, adopted um the genesis framework what levels were you great question uh so those two were already very familiar with me uh i had a, a background in web development before i met wordpress or genesis uh so html 
CSS, a little bit of server side languages like PHP and ASP, uh, which that's going to date me just a little bit. But uh, those are things I already had some familiarity with. Uh, coming into it now, I'm taking your question beyond where you perhaps extend it to go, but uh, coming into it now, uh, I still think that those things are, are very accessible via uh, online learning. Yeah. So to kind of finish off, you know, we've had some exciting development developments in the WordPress core around JavaScript and um, beyond the restless API. Um, kind of how do you think this is going to affect um, the Genesis framework or not, or what do you foresee this in any shape or form in the next year? That's a fantastic question, Jonathan. And <laughs> I'll, 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 finish it. It. I'll finish it on a high <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know what? I, last I, question. I honestly don't know. That's something that I'm investigating for myself. I want to understand. Um, how the REST API will most definitely affect theming. So I want to understand how it affects theming uh, and then be able to push out my, my learning uh, to my community of, of, um, of readers and listeners. Uh, I don't know that yet. I mean, Matt Mullenweg, I sat in his state of the word uh, on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. And he said in no uncertain terms, JavaScript is a huge part of WordPress moving forward. So, I, I mean, there's no, there's no question about it. Like invest some time, um, understanding. And of course, when it comes to all these JavaScript frameworks, yes, there's some nuances there, but just even understanding JavaScript at its core, that's an important skill to have. Uh, Genesis specifically, I'm, I don't know. That's anyone's guess. Again, I'm not part of, uh, that'd be a question for like Brian Gardner or Nathan Rice or the folks that are actually pushing development behind that. But, uh, I, yeah, it's important. Yeah, do you, um, to kind of finish off, um, do you, um, there were some concerns, and I don't know if you had them as well, you know, obviously when they developed the Rainmaker um, hosted platform, there were kind of comments that their focus would move away from Studio Press and the framework and everything. And um, that happened over half no, six, eight months ago. What, how do you think that has panned out? I, do you think there's less focus on, on, the, on the actual framework and, or not? I see we're getting a time clock. I can't quite see what the time clock says, so I'll just I'll, I'll try to wrap up Make my, go my story watch quickly. YouTube. I, <laughs> go watch on YouTube. It's but a podcast. Here's the deal. If, if we're looking at uh, actual developers, like that can commit to Genesis core, uh, which at that point, I mean, this is, I'm on that, uh, I'm, I'm within that team, but in terms of people that actually commit to core, that's Nathan Rice. He is one individual uh, of that ecosystem. And yes, more resources are absolutely focused towards uh, Rainmaker and building that pl platform. Does that mean that Genesis is, you know, the Titanic? No, I don't think so at all. Uh, I, I think that as uh, as people building our, our businesses around Genesis, um, the key is keep your ear to the ground, right? No technology, uh, no WordPress, not just Genesis, uh, so that whatever does come in the future, you're able to flex with that. Um, and I, I hope Gardner's not listening to this and cringing right now. But you know what? All things will eventually go by the wayside, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I'm very much still hanging on with Genesis. I love Genesis. I will con continue to contribute to that community uh, and use it. Uh, if Copyblogger for any reason, or Rainmaker uh, for any reason decided to abandon that, and please don't quote me because I have no reason to think that they would. But if they were, I think there was a very much strong enough developer community that that platform would continue. Yeah, just, just one one quick thing. Uh, let's get on the other side, John. Uh, can I just, I've got to do this, Bill. Um, can you inform my co-host um, that di even though it's a great plugin, that di the dynamic plugin okay. isn't, what isn't Genesis? Can you could you actually inform him? I, I know it's that? not Genesis. It just helps. Wait, are you talking about the dynamic theme? Yeah, dynamic. Uh, yeah. The plugin from uh, Cobalt. 
Okay, so two, so two things. Dynamic is a theme, a child theme for Genesis. Right. Uh, Genesis Extender carries a lot of that same functionality, but is a plug-in for Genesis themes. Um, I love Eric. I love, I, I think that his products are a gateway drug into a better understanding of how development works. Uh, I've, I've got no problem uh, promoting either one of his products. For me, they were a stepping stone. Uh, so if you're still using those products uh, two years into your development cycle, and your goal is to keep learning, then uh, okay, we're, we're, I'm being passed off. No, I'm but the, the um, thank you so much, Kerry Deals, the queen of word fr- of the Genesis framework somewhere in Texas. Your words of wisdom have been most welcome. I feel like I've just made some enemies here at the very end of the show. <laughs> No, not at all. You're, um, you're a fantastic guest and a great contributor to the WordPress community. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Bye, We're back Bill. on YouTube. We love all right, you. Night, night, Bill. <laughs> nice. Good meeting you, Carrie. I think I've seen you before somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I wish I could have met you in person at WordCamp US. I didn't realize you were there. I would, I yeah, would I spoke. You... Um, I teach people how to build online courses, and I, I was privileged enough to speak, and it was awesome. Yes. Go on, John. Um, join, join us. Join us, John. Oh, here he comes. There you go. So, uh, well, I, I have to say that I was I, I had a cold oh, all of last week. And no fun. Felt like, I felt like doo-doo. And so all of – I every – person i saw that i met before like my brain was just a complete wash and that was really kind of a di- I, I mean i had some good conversations but on the whole i just felt uh like i did not get my typical word camp experience uh, oh, oh I, i'm sorry uh, to hear that no, no, i'm, I'm sorry not to meaning hear that. that i'm not <laughs> meaning that to be sad sack but uh yeah i would have loved to have heard your session i actually napped quite a bit <laughs> I, I, I would never do that i would never nap and Never. when I say napped, I mean like in my hotel in the bed, not like in a session for. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be yeah. known to go to sleep in all sorts of uh, situations. No, if I don't feel well, I'm the same. And I missed the first half of the first day because I kept practicing my session. But then the rest of the time, I had a good time. It was really, I really had a good time. Yeah. Did you get good, uh, good feedback? Did you feel good about it? I did. I got really good feedback. I had a. Um, Jonathan was there at my session when I was in WordCamp Las mm-hmm. Vegas, and I was having a horrible time with my blood sugar that day. My, I was having a really bad hypoglycemic attack, and my, my, everyone said I did well in my presentation, but I was having a rough time with my blood sugar. But this time, it was directly after lunch. I had a salad with a piece of salmon, and I just, I was, I felt good. So that just helps yeah, everything. Funny enough, <laughs> Kim, I have the same problem, but it's normally after a couple of beers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, after a couple of beers, well, I drink wine, not beer, but after that, I'm usually pretty good. I can't always say I'll tell you what you want to hear, but I'm at least, I'm at least good. <laughs> there, actually, Kerry, there's a lost episode of WP Tonic where I was drugged up on <laughs> on cough medicine and every other kind of and oh, please say, don't make it lost. Publish that. that it's, like, Carrie, it's hysterical. It's, it was them. It was them interviewing me. And Jonathan was so stoned. He kept doing this thing where he was going. <laughs> Let me just tell you, you could actually like put that behind a paywall and I would pay to see it. <laughs> we should do yeah. that, Jonathan. Yeah. She, her eyes were just getting It was her first time that she, and her eyes were just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know what? She Make it a holiday. She just didn't know, it'll, just it'll, know it'll the response. WP Tonic for 2016. It was the blooper and, reel. <laughs> yeah. We'll all pay five bucks to see Jonathan stoned doing an interview. So, Carrie, um, um, can I just ask, you know, is this your going to be your normal um, production and interview environment, your car? No, <laughs> let, it's not. Let, okay, so here's it's so here's an after hours story. So my husband's out of town, like literally when I was uh, coming in from WordCamp US, I was trying to get off a plane while he was boarding a plane uh, to go out of town. Uh, so we haven't seen each other and I think this is our longest separation in, in uh, the time that we've been married, which is almost uh, two weeks. I know, uh, I know. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Hearts and 
craps. But anyways, his uh, his company, his team, he 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 uh, has a team of folks, and they were having their Christmas party today, and it was downtown. And he texted me, and he goes, "Hey, go downtown, buy my team a round of drinks." And I was like, "Oh, somebody, somebody really? left us." Really, really? I, I, but anyways, I'm Dills representing, so I've come downtown. I bought his posse. Uh, I, I actually didn't even stay for the check. I just dropped off some cash at the table, but I, <laughs> here I am. And so this is not my normal uh, interview location. I apologize for the sort of... No, actually, story. this sounds not be bad, actually. <laughs> um, and the video quality has been okay. Amazing. You must have pretty good... So um, so you both were at... Um, you know, when, you, when you've when you had enough... You've done your bit, Kerry. So when you, have, when you get fed up with this, you've got all permission to leave... But I'd like to ask. <laughs> oh, I just want to stay and like give give hands to everybody. Yeah, do that. Uh, I need. Hi, John. Hands. I'm giving some hands uh, to you. Oh, well, what have you got here? Uh, um, so um, Thanks, I just Kerry. like you know you. <laughs> um, oh, wait. Oh, and also John is um he, he visually he has disappeared on me, but he's with us. Um, I just like to ask you. You're both at Word Camp US. Um. What what's your general what, what was your general impression about how it went and were, what what were some of the big themes of of the word camp? Shall we start my with Kim? One, yeah, my biggest with- one was um, well. First of all, I I, I I loved it. I mean, if I could be if if I could be someone like you know who just flies around and goes to word camps every weekend, I'd probably do it because there's so much just good energy I pull from word camp. The, the three things I would say from this one were, one, it was so amazing to see such a big camp. You know, at the state of the word, Matt, uh, Matt Mullenweg said there were 1,801 people there. And I believe it because most word camps, you know, they're 200, 300, even Miami, which I go to, which is 700. But you see everybody you know. And I mean, contributor day, I ran into a woman I know. I'm like, what the heck are you doing here? She'd been there the whole time. We just had not managed to meet. So that the the, the large that the large aspect of it was a little overwhelming, but but well well done, very well done. I loved it. The other thing was, um, yeah, but I wasn't there. That's true. <laughs> kind of thing so it was only like it was only like ninety five percent. Like yeah. one hundred. Well, that would have made eighteen hundred and two, and then you know we needed to see you, Jonathan. Um, the other thing was, uh, I went to several of the sessions this time on accessibility because that's mm-hmm. becoming more of a of a focus, I think, within the community. And sat down with a few people, and guys. It was a real eye opener for me. I realized how wrong I'm doing certain things, particularly when it comes to keyboard clicks. And I've kind of committed to my users that oh, it's going to take me more than a couple of weeks. But over the next few months, yeah. I plan on really spending actually, some time actually, in my uh, sites you, on that. Yeah. Actually, Kim, you brought up a fantastic subject, which I forgot to ask um, Carrie. <laughs> Um, obviously, you, you've been noted with your blog post about accessibility and your own theme. So, in general, the um, the Studio Press Genesis and the um, child themes, when it comes to accessibility, how do they rate, Kerry? Oh, okay. Can we can we not even talk about Genesis for a second and just give the props props to accessibility? Actual uh, props. And, yes. And what the WordPress accessibility has done to bring, uh, because Kim, you said you're doing it all wrong. And that's not true. The fact is that you didn't know. And so I think so much of about accessibility is awareness of what those good habits are, like how to do proper alt text for your images and, uh, and, and good uh, link text, all those things. They're not And yes, Genesis is making some good strides towards that, thanks in tremendous part to Rian Retveld and her efforts there. Uh, But yeah, I mean, it's... She's who I sat down with. After I went to the presentation, I sat down with her and I said, oh my gosh, I've always been good with alt text, but like the keyboard scrolling, I was missing it in so many fronts. Uh, I am not doing my hovers right the themes I'm using aren't always doing it right. I need to go and put that into a child theme. And uh, it was just, it was a real eye opener. And, and I was very appreciative of it. 
So, uh, Jonathan, I'll I'll shoot you some uh, some links to articles that you can throw up in your show notes if, if yeah. folks want to learn more about that, where they can, uh, well, where they can do that. You know, I would like that. It's always been a kind of back burner, hasn't it? But you know, there's been a lot of back and forth. But in what do you do? You think it? It's something really hard, or is it just people forget about it? And if you do it a, a little bit, it becomes a lot easier. Here's the deal. It's, it's complex, right? I mean, it's like, we're talking about legal things. And so the language around it, I actually, I'm working on a post right now called how accessibility is so inaccessible (laughs) to, to developers and designers, because it, it seems like this big ball of string that, you know, how do you even understand it? Um, But the, The bottom line is you can follow some kind of core principles and I'm actually working on a series with uh, Rion and Gary Jones and Amanda Rush and uh, Sophia Woods and some other folks in the, in the uh, Genesis community to come out with a series of articles just to sort of help people like, okay, I can, I can check the box on that. And it's very simple behaviors. It does not have to be overly complex. The sort of, uh, if you want to b- break it down into some categories, there's accessibility for content writers, there's accessibility for designers, and there's accessibility for developers. And each of those things, it's a little bit, you know, the check boxes get a little bit different. But uh, anyways, and, I, I, yeah, and what no, comes go ahead. To, Sorry. And what comes to mind um, is that actually the Genesis framework, if it was through its community, it could actually be the leader in in accessibility, really, couldn't it? Oh, I, I think it absolutely could be. Uh, yeah. And I think that's that's the community pushing that. Yeah. That's uh, so we've got John. Can you say something, John? Yeah. Speak, Hello. Speak, John. What's up, John? I'm here. <laughs> John Rock is Hi, John. He's one of our great panel of uh, that joins us at the end of the month um, to join our live table. Um, so, John, so what did you – did you watch any of the um, WordCamp um, US and – were there any highlights or things that you want that you know you'd really kind of stood in your mind? I, um, to be honest, I didn't watch any of the live stream of WordCamp US. I was uh, I was actually like working all the way through that week and the weekend and Thanksgiving, so um, oh, I just yeah. totally missed it. So, um, but you know, I'm sure that it's going to be on WordPress TV very shortly. What I did do is. Uh, you know, go back and, and watch some of the archived uh, word camps like Portland and L.A. and the Netherlands. And, and there's a lot of good information there, too. Yeah, I think um, I'll carry You're um, muted, brother. Uh, am I muted? Oh, I don't think I am. Oh, well, I, I am? Think... No, Jonathan is muted. Oh, dear. Oh. I think he thinks he's talking to us right now, but he's not. Oh, I can hear him. I can hear him. You I can hear him. I can hear John. It's you, Kerry. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. You, hear my I tr- I, you know what it was? I was trying to give a lot of those props hands thing to John you because me off? of the UX on this. I accidentally muted you. There's a lot of people <laughs> would like to do that. Okay, this <laughs> interface is not accessible. There's a lot of people that would like to mute me, dear. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so, um, so one of the uh, now, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the gentleman who who was the lead um, on this version that was announced of the core, but um, I thought one of the um, exciting things was how uh, responsive images are going to be handled mm-hmm. now. So, what's your thoughts about that, um, Kerry? Because that seemed uh, are, the, are the do you think they did the best job they could? They found the best solution, and can you flesh it out for me. I, I, well, I I can't because I'm the least. Uh, I, I wasn't part of that team or that decision making or the people that contributed to that. I, so I, I really can't speak intelligently to that. I think the fact that well, that has never stopped like, anybody on this show, Kerry. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I think the fact that it's that it, they're doing responsive images is is coming into core is is fantastic because that's you know it, yeah. again I can't speak. Like you hear so many questions, uh, like in the studio press forums, my gosh, go search in the studio press forums for responsive headers and you'll just want to maybe stab your eyeballs. Uh, so it's a, it's a concern for people. And I think that the fact that they're making it easier to do, 
uh, is, is fantastic, but I can't speak any more intelligently than that. And that was probably even oh. not intelligent. What about you, John? Can you speak a bit more intelligently? <laughs> <laughs> what was your response to my, uh, then how responsive oh, images? No, I know that uh, responsive images is something that is been being worked on for a couple of years now, uh, not just in WordPress, but in the, in the larger like web community, more like the, uh, uh, the kind of the crowd, like the the an event part guys and 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 those kind of people, uh, have been working on it really diligently. And Morton, our own Morton, is uh, been the guy in the WordPress community that's that's really been close to the metal with uh, the responsive images. I think it's a really good thing. Um, I I think it's I I know in the past um, it's it's really been a tricky problem to solve. Um, but I think the fact that it's, you know, that people have figured out a way to solve that problem and bring it into WordPress core, I think is really exciting. I think it makes, uh, you know, there's there's so many tools now like for web development that weren't there, you know, 10 years ago. And, but you know, there's also problems that weren't there 10 years ago. So I, I think it's really exciting for WordPress. I think that it's a good step in the right direction. I also think that them focusing on accessibility this next year is be a big step into making uh, a WordPress a platform that that everybody that is you know leading the web, being more of a leader um, instead of just kind of keeping pace. So, yeah. Because one of the announcements, Kim, was that you know that they they that they were introducing that core, but he did say there was still some issues dealing with um, um, high definition screens, and it wasn't the total solution. But they felt that they provided a solution that was the best that they could do at the present moment. Would you agree with that, Kim? Um. I would say, yeah, based on what I heard of everything. And, and I, I was impressed with what was coming out. I thought getting to be there for the state of the word was pretty impressive. Like <laughs> to get to actually hear it in person. And yeah, that was, I, I thought Matt really presented that WordPress is over 25% of the web now and we're able to make changes. So when WordPress adopts something, that was part of his point, right? When we adopt something, we push that to a chunk of the web now and help help push that, which I really did like. Now, having said that, if, if you remember, Carrie, some of the questions about accessibility were not necessarily warm and fuzzily adopted. It was it was well, we're going to put that in when we can. But um, translation, for example, is a little bit higher on the list right now than I think what some of the people who are the real accessibility pushers, like Rianne would like to have a little bit higher on the on the push for core that that was what i kind of heard uh throughout my my pre my situation there sure well i mean if you go back and listen to uh the state of the word from 2014 and one certain morton that we all know and love uh and hearing his questions around accessibility even to see the progress uh, from that state of the word to this state of the word, where accessibility was actually mentioned before somebody brought it up in a question. Right. I, I, I think is at least like good forward progress. And yes, uh, translation to me, translation is part of accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, as global users, uh, we're, we're not all English speaking. The majority of us are probably not even English speaking at this point. Mm -hmm. And so uh, making your code uh, translation ready is uh, for me that's like accessibility for developers it's so i i, I yeah. think translation uh and accessibility do sort of go hand in hand in that regard but yeah there's still a long way to go with accessibility was, was morton the one that got up at the state of the word this time and asked about that I, I i was i was far enough back all i got to see was the back of his head when he got up and said um, I'm glad we're talking about these different things. Could we make accessibility that much of it? Because we still have, and he mentioned that it was a huge jump. It went from what, like uh, seven so themes we to a hundred like, themes yeah, seven, or something that were seven, approved. Yeah, 17 accessibility ready themes uh, this time last year to 79 that were this year. And I'm going to have a, uh, I got a true statement. I don't know if that was Morton that asked that question because I really had to pee. <laughs> and I excused myself uh, from the state of the word for a, a certain point in time. 
So I missed that critical question, but I would I would not be surprised if it another was first, cool. another first. Kind <laughs> you on, online. You can you can edit this later, or no, maybe I'm, not. This, this is not rec- what well, is this? This isn't edited. This goes on YouTube, right? <laughs> no, it's not recorded. Thank God. Uh, right, so. It says recording, Jonathan. Oh, it is recording. All right. Oh God. <laughs> All right. Uh, right okay, right. so true confession. I occasionally have to go to the bathroom. I don't know if any of y'all have experienced that. Uh, but. I never. I never. do. Uh, all right. I, I'd just like to ask you all, folks, um, one thing that's, you know, it's going to be slightly controversial, and I don't want it taken in the wrong way because in the big scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. But when Matt announced that he was going to be um, – core lead i think either in the third or fourth quarter of next year i was surprised that he announced that and um my own position is i'm not too sure it's a good usage of his time and what i mean by that i'm sure he'd do an excellent job but um as ceo ceo and also um i don't know what his position in is in the wordpress foundation do you really think it, it really is a, a really worthwhile utilisation of his time resources to be lead, of course? And I'm going to start with Kim. I'm 100% split on that. So if you ask me just 100% from a business perspective, does the CEO and God, I don't know, do they even have a, I think they have a board of directors now, right? Does the CEO's main business leading a core of developers, the best use of his CEO. There is a business slash board of directors piece of me that would say no. But having been in tech for a long time, I will tell you that there is a, that there is a perspective of employees and developers and et cetera, that the respect and the props stay there when this guy can still do it. And he's not just a suit. And by the way, he wears really nice suits now. Don't know if anyone noticed that. Man, you know, he is not wearing the t-shirt, the shirts and the pants anymore. He was decked out. So I think that there's, I think there's both. And I think that having those props still and being able to do it for a tech company and a company that is as, even though automatic is separate from WordPress.org, I get that, but still... It, there is something that says to the community, I'm still here. It hasn't changed. And I do think there's absolute value in that. What about you, Kerry? What, what do you think? I, I, I think I really liked what Kim thinks. And I want to hear what John thinks. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. oh, oh, yeah. Right then, Kerry. Go on. Go on, John. No, um, I, I really do think that um, there's something to what Kim's saying in that you see a lot of developers get promoted into, you know, and not just talking like WordPress, but just in general, you see like a lot of developers get promoted into managerial positions because they're good at what they do. But once you start overseeing people and you're not trenches anymore and it does web development or anything else, once you're perceived as being separate from the people in the, in the trenches doing the work, there's a perception change. And I think maybe for Matt, he wants to uh, get his hands dirty and be down there in the trenches with the other developers. And this might be the last time that he is the actual project lead because he does have a lot on his plate. But I think it will you know, keep people um, seeing him as a, a good leader of the pro- project. So... Yeah. yeah, my my position on this is a bit different, and I do understand what you said, Kim, but I I feel um, and um, I feel when you're dealing with a size of organisation now, and also you've taken external money, you've had the integration of WooCommerce, um, that was a substantial purchase. Um, you're it's not only um, company capital; you've actually got in external investment capital i i don't think um i think the um usage of the time of the ceo um could be better utilized um i'm sure he will do an excellent job um 
but you, you know there are there are only so many hours in a day and there's a number of quite large issues that are going to be coming up um in 2016 that going to need a quite considerable amount of time and organization and um that leadership needs to come from Matt um not only as the ceo uh, um of, but of you know he's in a leader leadership position in both um, the private company and the foundation. So I just feel um, I understand why he's done it and why he chose to do it, but it's only my opinion that it wasn't the right decision, and um, I would advise him not to do that again. But you know he's a man, so I'm never going to work for him. <laughs> No, you're not, Jonathan. <laughs> you're not going to work. You weren't going to work for him anyway. You're good. <laughs> no, I, I might be the support engineer. It seems quite a nice life, actually, to some extent. Uh, but that's me finished, isn't it, Kerry? You, you, you're not going to say anything about this, are you, Kerry? Well, I, I will say I'll probably never work for Matt either for the sole perspective uh, that you cannot pursue uh, side projects. And that's, a, that's an honest oh, starter right. for me. I didn't know. Oh, plus that, I'm unhireable, so it's all good. Uh, no one's going to hire me. I did actually know that they had that requirement, so that's a requirement in working for them. You're not allowed any side projects. That's correct. So yeah, so some of the uh, like when they acquired WooCommerce, there were several of those folks that had their own independent, uh, either plugin plug-in shops or uh, in one case there was one person that was a, a author for lynda.com and those things weren't uh, able to be pursued and I do understand the not wanting to conflict uh, right so but I also think that kind of what WordPress is uh, yeah. at its core uh, the, the, the freedom to do things I, yeah. I I just disagree with that. And I think that you, uh, they have some wonderful talent working for them. They also cut themselves off uh, mm -hmm. from a lot of potential talent that, that just won't ever agree to those conditions. No, it's a I kind didn't of, know that. I, 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 I didn't know that actually. Um, you know, every company's got the right to make their own policies, but I, I, Absolutely. Don't, I don't agree with it. But maybe they found through bitter <laughs> experience that they had to kind of have that. Um, kind of set up but um yeah it swings roundabouts so um are there was there any any of the presentations because you kerry you you were asleep most of the time though were you i just want to reiterate i didn't sleep during anyone's presentation no i was i was wide eyed uh are you going to ask about favorite sessions? Or was yeah, it a was you awake at any of those that you could say that were favorite? <laughs> All the ones I attended, I was fully awake for and enjoyed. Uh, probably any... the, the, the one I enjoyed uh, most was actually about accessibility and just sort of uh, kind of what I was talking about early, making accessibility accessible. So uh, based on your role, whether it's project manager or designer or a, a a content writer or a uh, developer uh, here sort of like, let's break it down and make accessibility approachable uh, for those. So, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry because of the hour, I cannot remember the gentleman's name that gave that presentation. However, <coughs> what about you, Kim? Obviously you were totally awake in there. So uh, right. yes, I didn't sleep through any, and I'm so glad she didn't say, well, I went to your presentation, but I slept through it. I mean, at least being back in your room and asleep. That's okay. That's okay. But if you had said, I, I went to your presentation, but I slept through it, I'd be like, what? Um, you wouldn't have though, because I'm kind of loud. Uh, yeah, I would say my favorite ones were on accessibility. And as I say, it was really an eye opener for me because I've I've always worked to be good with alt tags and, and H1s and some of the other things, but I just really didn't realize that, that like the keyboard stuff and, and some of the other things. So getting to sit down with someone afterwards, like I went to the accessibility session and I, it made me seek out the accessibility team on contributor day to get more information. So that really was uh, Tony Perez of uh, Sucori. I love those guys. I love everything they do. And he is entertaining as a presenter, as a presenter. Uh, I, you know, yeah, he's talking about security and it's important, but he's funny as well as 
as given some really good information. So his was another one of my favorites. Um, and I just, and like I said, I love those guys. I hung out at their thing, uh, at their table a lot. A lot of the others, the, the presentations were all good. Um, but just, it, I, I think, you know, anytime you go to a word camp, I mean, really, if it's just the presentations, I could sit home and watch it streaming. Yeah. It's the people you meet in the hall. It's the people I hang out with and I go, oh my gosh, I know you online. Um, you guys, I don't know, Jonathan, if you know Eileen Smith. She's a lady I blab with sometimes. She popped in with us that night you were drunk on our <laughs> interview, you know. <laughs> and he really wow. wasn't drunk. It was cough what medicine. Was but you know, I, you I, guys, I, 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 I and I to, walked by her in the hall. And I, I said, want to make totally clear to our online audience. It was I, was, I, was it on, was I was on medical medication. He was, uh, when he uh, was... Yeah, my mother would have said, drunk as a monkey. That's what she would have said. And, um, but I walked by her and in the hall and I realized, oh my gosh, it's you. So th that's really where the magic to me of WordCamp happens. It's the people you get to interact with, the people you know online and you get to meet, the people you, like, I got to meet Pippin. We talked about him. Jonathan, we talked about you. I said, no, hey. he, he probably still hasn't recovered. <laughs> no, he, he said nice things about you. I don't think I don't think you were on cold medicine when you interviewed him. No, I was, I was at my best behavior. I totally so, uh, so anyway, that's, that's really to me that those were the presentations that I jumped out the I most. I don't understand the individual that looks like 14 for most, you know, looks like 14 <laughs> can actually build a multi million dollar WordPress company. But there, <laughs> there, there, there we go. I, you, know? I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm no official spokesperson. I'm pretty sure it's not a multi billion dollar company. I don't think so. Not multi billion. That might be the million. I meant million. Million. I don't even okay. think okay. automatic's multi billion yet. No, I don't. <laughs> no but that's. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he looks he's amazing. He looks he's 14. Awesome. He looks still look like 14, doesn't he? Well, just know? think what he'll do when he's 28. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. Just uh just sit yeah. him. You know, the talent in WordPress is just So that was my feedback on WordCamp. The other the other one thing, I think because it was WordCamp US, I would say the networking for me and the people I meet with and the people I engage with, that's the best of all the WordCamps. I mean, heck, Jonathan. Why are we on blabs every week? Because we met at WordCamp. I have two or three other friends that, you know, we now do work together all the time because we met at WordCamps. This one, I think because it was WordCamp US, I actually got to interact with and network with so many more of the people actually from Automatic. I just want to confirm this, but I might have got it totally wrong. Did they announce... Where the where they're going to have it for two oh sixteen? Yeah, the again. ticket it's it's Philadelphia again. They're doing them a two years. The WordCamp US's will be in the same city two years at a time. Now, and twenty sixteen's uh, tickets are already on sale, guys, for forty bucks. So if you want to go, get yeah. them get them now. I just want your response about that. Um, was you mm -hmm. not? I thought the whole purpose was that it was going to move around from year to year. Was you not a little bit surprised by that position? I've got nothing against Philly apart from it, you know. But my thought is from a sorry, Kim. I go I ahead. Just cut you off. Okay. No, go ahead. I think you're I'm just going to say, say from, a, from a uh, as a work camp organizer, the planning production aspect of it, yeah, uh, and especially since this one was on such a quick turnaround. Uh, I think to be able to have it the same place two years in a row gives a tremendous benefit uh, from an organizational standpoint, I, or at least for this first go around uh, to the future. I, I, I don't know. But um, as a Texan, a Southerner, I was like, Philly, like, I'm not kidding here. I went out and bought coats for this word camp because I was like, I, I don't, I, I'm not prepared for this weather. Where do you live in Texas, Carrie? I'm in Fort Worth. Well, really? Dallas and Fort Worth gets as cold as it was in Philly this week. Yeah, but I didn't know it was <laughs> yeah. going to be 60 degrees in Philly. I was, like, thinking subpar. Yeah. Like she the never leaves the bunker, Kim. That's <laughs> right. Right. I'm, I'm in a bunker right here. Yeah, so the, the weather was actually pleasant. Philly's a beautiful city. I thought uh, I was a skeptic, but uh, anyways, that's beyond the scope of the question you asked. But I, I guess that's why. Kim, did you have uh, other thoughts on that? They had announced when they first went out for proposals, they announced that it would be in two-year increments. Oh, so right. they'd always announced that they were going to do oh, it two years that. at a time. And I think because it is a moving show, 
being able to book a conference hall twice, two at a time, the hotels and all, it, it does make it, you as an organizer, Carrie, you know that it makes it easier if you can do that. So they did, they announced that originally. So it'll be two years now in Philadelphia and then it'll be two years somewhere else. I would love for it to be in Fort Worth. I was there for a conference this summer and I love Fort Worth. So I'll vote for you. Wait, I don't know if I want to be part of that planning <laughs> committee. Like, no, no. <laughs> All right, so we move on a little bit. John, um, so obviously there was a ton of talk about JavaScript. It was a key part of Matt's presentation and a lot of valid discussion. So got any thoughts and insights about JavaScript and how it seems to be um, planned out for 2016? I'll jump in. Sure. Yeah, um, on. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at WordPress already, I mean, uh, most people who work with it, it you were used to doing HTML, CSS, and PHP. But if you really look at it, it's already using a lot of JavaScript already. Um, it's got backbone right in the core. Uh, it's using handlebars um, already. But with the introduction of Clipso, you're um, seeing that, that they're building on top of the, Re the React library. Well, I think it's it's going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to pull in a lot of developers who kind of wrote off words um, as that blogging software. Um, and 25% of the web, it really doesn't you know mean anything if it's not the right 25%. And you know it, it's about talent. You know that's one part of it is bringing in the people who would normally go to work at the Silicon Valley startups or the enterprise level um, companies and bringing them into WordPress and you know seeing what they can do with it and saying like, hey, we're building on top of uh, you know JavaScript because that is you know kind of the the here and now and the future of of web development. The other thing I think it's going to do. Sorry, I'll, I'll make this quick, but I think the other thing with having the, the custom admin with Clipso and having that being open source, you're going to see more enterprise companies um, be able to have uh, something that they can interact with that looks professional to their standards and not just the normal default you know, black bar on the side, uh, WordPress admin that we're used to using because they might need specialty information in their admin panels. And this will give them a way, you know, Clipso, and it's going to get extended out, I'm sure. It'll give people a way to um, build those type of admin panels. Plus, you know, you know, using the JSON API as a way to use WordPress as just a database, pull it into app, you know. So, go ahead. Yeah, I think you made, I think you made some great points, and I'm, I'm just going to add my own little bit and then see what Kerry has to say about it. Um, um, about, um, in my experience, I, I think it, it's a step that had to be done, but my experience in dealing with a lot of maintenance tasks, jobs with WP Tonic, some of my worst nightmares are around the implementation badly of JavaScript in commercial themes and call it in jQuery and fault finding some of some of the most um, draining things that are, me and my team have had to do is finding um, J JavaScript problems with themes. So um, the second thing is what you said about um, kind of custom backends. That sounds really attractive, but it also it's a I think a two edged sword because you could end up with even more fragmented kind of desktop backend systems. And already uh, with a lot of themes, you know, you can find settings in the plugin plane, in the setting plane, in the appearance plane. You, you know, it's one of the problems. You can find settings all over the place. And this might actually lead to further fragmentation. So what do you think, Kerry? Do you think... Uh, I'm talking out the back of my backside, or is there any big any worth in what I'm saying? I I, I think I honestly don't know enough to uh, to speak intelligently. I would I would I would just say this: that the complexities that you see with JavaScript and the uh, the irritations from a user perspective, 
I hope that that will be completely uh, non-existent or slash transparent for the ultimate end user. That those are tools that as developers we can use to create a better experience, um, not just confound the people using our software. Uh, but Anyways, again, I said I didn't have anything intelligent to contribute, and and with that, I am going to have to. Uh, oh. I've, heard, I've heard the bomb siren go yes, off. Have I, you, gotta get, have you. I gotta get out of my shelter. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what it is: my fuel tank's on empty, and I, <laughs> I've got to proceed okay, to the you, nearest gas station. Um, you've been a fantastic guest, and and uh, continue with our crazy discussion is much appreciated. But uh, I you, think we I think we covered a lot of good stuff, haven't we? Haven't we? You, you guys are a pleasure, and John, actually, very nice to see you uh, in, in in person. And uh, Kim, great to meet you. Nice and, to uh, meet look you. Forward to, and, uh, uh, I just like to, up. yeah, I just like to take this opportunity to wish you, you, your husband, and your family a great uh, Christmas and New Year. And I hope everything continues the way, and you have great success in two thousand sixteen. Appreciate that, and and right back at you, brother. So. Thanks. Peace out. Jonathan, I'm going to jump off too. It's a bedtime for me. You know me. Yep, it certainly is. So, um, so very we'll good. See you weekend. later, Kim. Nice to see you, John. I'll see you guys next bye. time. All right. Bye. 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 bye.